of 1999, a group of new filmmakers descended upon Raptors of the Rockies, a bird of prey rehabilitation center outside Clinton, Montana. The visit was the centerpiece for a five-day workshop on the introduction to wildlife filmmaking. Students learn how to research, write scripts, operate a video camera, and how to make editing decisions. We also studied how to be critical of wildlife films and how to make ethical decisions about filming wildlife. Raptors of the Rockies provides a home to injured and orphaned raptors that cannot survive in the wild. Along with our birds, director Kate Davis travels to schools and communities throughout western Montana, educating people about raptors. In our film, we look at some of their stories. We arrived early on the third day of the workshop at Raptors of the Rockies. Kate Davis greeted us, along with one of her dogs. Kate lives in the northern Rocky Mountains of western Montana. This is a program that's been around for 11 years, and right now there's 15 birds, and they all have injuries, and you'll all see what's wrong with each one. We see one with part of a wing uh, missing, one, several of them with part of the wings missing, some of them with droopy wings, um, one of them is missing some toes on their foot. They all have problems, so they all come to me as a rehabilitation bird, so I have a rehab license. Then they go on what, what we call a possession permit, and that's how I'm allowed to keep them and use them for programs. Then we have an eagle exhibition permit and a falconry license. So four permits let me keep these birds. Well, let's see if this makes you squeamish. Here's a bag of mice. Okay. Sweet. Yes, black mice, brown mice, white Ooh, mice, all different sizes. I, I buy these. After demonstrating some of the foods the birds eat, Kate took us on a tour of the compound to prepare us for our day of filming. Hey, Cole, let's go. First, we visited the pen for Max, one of a pair of golden eagles. This is a male golden eagle, and see, that's how he gets around. He can't fly. So anyway, that's Max. And what, what we'll do for the eagle folks is uh, we'll bring the other eagle out. Kate next introduced us to Crackety Jones, a western screech owl. I'll give her this mouse. Is that her wing gone? Yes, she's missing part of a wing. Same with Alice the Cooper Sock. Both these birds were hit by cars. This bird I've had for nine and a half years, that bird for ten and a half years. In the next room, we found Alice, a Cooper's hawk. She was in the middle of molting her feathers. And we'll give her that out in the yard. Yeah. Like right now, she'll eat this like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jones, are you going to eat that or drop it? You're going to eat it or drop it. That's great. And see, there we go. Finally, we headed out to the barn to see Bobo and Miles, a pair of great horned owls. There we go. Okay, now here are their, who's our horned owl crew? The larger owl is Bobo, the smaller, Miles. All the programs I've done. This summer he had his 500th program. So he can fly a little bit, not well enough. Um, what I do, they don't fight over food. I put usually six mice over here. And since I got Miles, has anybody ever heard of Miles Davis? Yes, very good. I get to talk about jazz. Before we broke off into our teams to begin filming, Kate offered us some last-minute advice. Yes, this is, this is important. Um, when, I'm, when I'm doing bird programs, I don't want to take a bird in there that looks so bad and looks like it's so miserable and looks like it's uncomfortable and looks like it's terrified. Uh, you want to take birds that look comfortable and you want to shoot film subjects that look comfortable because you're not going to educate the public if they are disturbed because they will not get that out of their mind. They're disturbed. There's something wrong here. You can tell them all the facts in the world. It doesn't do any good. So when we film, we're going to try to film their best sides and show the beauty of them and uh, show that they are content and do well in captivity. Obviously, each of these birds has a problem, and uh, we are, we're trying to show, indeed, these are educational tools that are important to keep and use for programs, but they're content. They, they, uh, train, they bathe, they eat well, they look good. And for that reason, that's why they're kept in captivity and uh, happy endings. 
These are our films. These are Kate's two golden eagles, Max and Nigel. Max was found in the Bob Marshall Wilderness after eating a poison lace carcass that set off his balance. Nigel was found west of Ronan a week after being shot. This is Bunny, Max's pet. He was intended for food, but instead they became friends. Now the eagles feed on game meat and squirrels, even though they used to feed on small and medium-sized live mammals. One of Nigel's favorite foods are ground squirrels. What are some of their other favorite foods? He likes game meat, uh, elk and deer meat. He's had some bear, he's had some mountain lion, and he loves mice. Thank you. This is Max's swimming pool. Nigel also has one like it. They use it to cool off in the hot summer days. An eagle's eyesight is so good, it can see a mouse a mile away. This is Max's home and some of the places where he perches. Over here is a bar in the shade so he can cool off in the hot summertime. To your right is another bar, a water bowl, and a bale of hay for putting food on. Soon Nigel will move in here and Max will have a roommate. This is Nigel's home. He'll be moving out to Max's enclosure in the spring. golden eagles and other raptors are safe from shooting, poisoning, and other dangers. <laughs> this is a western screech owl. Normally it wouldn't be here, but this is a special case. This is Will Harrison reporting for WHN. I'm here with Kate Davis and her birds. So, Kate, what's his name? This is Crackety Jones, and Crackety Jones is a female western screech owl, and she got that name because, like all other owls, she clicks her top beak and bottom beak. Click, click. Crackety Jones. Uh -huh. And, uh... How did he come under your care? Well, this bird uh, was hit by a car not far from here, in Tura, actually, nine and a half years ago. And she broke her wrist, and it was broken so badly that we had to take the wing tip off. So the she wing. only has half a wing on and this side. Where's the other wing? And there's her other wing. Yep, that looks good. And uh, so what places would it live in the wild? Western screech owls are woodland birds, and uh, they actually do well in parks and cities because they can live in small parks, eat rodents and uh, insects, and uh, hang around and not have great horned owls bother them. The western screech owl will live in tree cavities, abandoned magpie nests, or even hollowed out cactuses. And when they lay their eggs, the eggs are white. The western screech owl can average 7 to 10 inches tall. But luckily, almost all screech owls don't have to spend their time in a barn or on the road to school programs. They normally stay in lush woodlands, near rivers and lakes, and in desert cacti. Western screech owls range from the southern tip of Alaska, throughout Idaho and western Montana, down through California and into Mexico. Since they live in such diverse ecosystems, they eat many different foods, including rodents, like mice, large insects, and small birds. So, any other things we should know about the owl, like how good its eyesight is or something like that? Well, it can see pretty darn well. It can see better than we can, but they can't see color. Owls can't see color. 
So she can see us just fine, but black and white. Okay. And you, can, and you can see that membrane that comes across when she blinks. It's called a nictitating membrane. All mm -hmm. birds have it. It's a third eyelid. Thanks for this interview, Kate. Well, thank you very much. This is Will Harrison signing off for WHN. Cooper. I'm a Cooper's Hawk with no freedom. Ever since I was injured by a car in 1989, I have been in captivity. My caretaker, Kate, is a very sweet person, but it is just not the same. I dream of flying, soaring high above, above trees, clouds, and tall, tall buildings. I want to have babies, to build them nests in the tall trees of the green forest to warm their whitish blue eggs under my body. When my young would hatch, I would feed them not what I was fed, but what I hunted for. I would hunt small birds and rodents, game birds, insects, and occasional rabbit or frog. But hey, they are only dreams, and for now, they can't come true. The amazing Bobo and his extraordinary friend Miles. They are great horned owls. Great horned owls are the biggest kind of owl in the world. Their bodies are as big as a small dog. Their wingspan is as long as a Shetland pony. Bobo was sadly mistaken for an elk and shot in his elbow. He can no longer fly. Great horned owl's eyes are so big that their brain is smaller than both of their eyes combined. They can blink like a human with their feathery eyelashes. Their horns aren't really horns at all. They are just a bunch of feathers. The females are extraordinarily bigger than the males, but they both share the same amazing coloration. They eat chicken. Raw. But Bobo now eats laboratory mice, which are bred for scientific research. Their smell is so poor that they can eat skunks. Raw. In fact, they eat everything. Raw. Great horned owls reside in plains, deserts, dense forests on city parks. Bobo now helps educate children. This is what Bobo sees every day. As you can see, Bobo is an amazing creature. Raw. There are many other injured birds with a home at Raptors of the Rockies, including Otto, a rough-legged hawk, Spike, a short-eared owl, Micah, a northern harrier, and Kiko, a prairie falcon. Their stories will have to wait for another time. Oh, I've got a way better idea. Zoom in on Max. Master the world over here. And then Pan and I will then zoom out. And you're going to be off camera? Um, gonna, actually, yeah, I'll be off camera. You guys did some really, had some really good ideas. You should pat yourself on the back. Yay! Yay. Yay. Nice job. Good job. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Yay. 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 You guys are going to go on and, and show Steven Spielberg a few things, right? Yeah. These are Kate's two golden eagles, Max and Nike. Okay, gonna... the last scene. Okay. I, I, just, I, ha I have know. to. Do you want to get close up to her? I'll just put her on that perch. We got. No, no, we got it. So a little bit wise. Okay, here are the, here's our horned owl 
One, two, three. Today we met some kids who were excited to be in school. And you might be too if you were learning to be a filmmaker. NBC Montana's Travis Mayfield has a story. Lights, camera, action. A new group of filmmakers met in Missoula for the first time today. Okay, we've got it. Now we've got power on our camera. You guys this class of directors, producers, and talent aren't what you might expect. They're kids, and they aren't shooting the next action thriller, but a wildlife film about birds. It's a project we've been thinking about for a long time and always thought would be a really good idea. Heather Toma, along with a talented crew of instructors, will be spending the next week helping this group of 10 to 13 year olds research, write, shoot, and edit a film on birds of prey called raptors of the Rockies. A lot of these birds are, yeah, big, so. Each student will select a bird they want to study. Uh, we choose the golden eagle. It's powerful, it's kind of, you know, a symbolic bird. Like. After researching their choice, the junior filmmakers visit Kate Davis's Raptor Center to film the real thing. I've never been like really close to hawks or whatever and owls, so that'd be cool, but I also like to use video equipment. And probably one of the most exciting things for these kids is to know that their film, when finished, will be entered into the International Wildlife Film Festival next year here in Missoula. Perhaps this class will even mark the beginning for the next Steven Spielberg. What do you want to be when you grow up? A lawyer. A lawyer. Yeah. So there's no video equipment in that. No. No. Or maybe not. But until then, these kids are having a great time and learning something in the process. In Missoula, Travis Mayfield reporting. The class is put on by the Montana Natural History Center, and organizers hope to make it an annual event.